Get your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free. During the process of declaring a variable, the name and value of the variable is stored to the computer's memory for later use. The value of the variable can then be used by the formula or by other calculations later on in the report. When using multiple variables within a complex formula, it's important to note that the last variable assigned a value or referenced within the formula is the one which will be displayed in the formula's result field when the field is finally placed into the report. So if we select this formula field, which we've created in the last lesson, which is a running total, adding the total sales for each employee, but only if the total sales are greater than 30,000, we can click the Edit button in the Field Explorer toolbar to view the function created. So first we referenced a variable, made it currency for the data type, and called it order total. We then made a complex expression using an if-then-else statement that says if the sum of order amount for each employee is greater than or equal to 30,000, in that case, order total should have the value set to itself plus the sum of order amount for that employee. Otherwise, it should have itself as its value, not adding in the additional amount. So when we save and close this, we just place the formula field into the report at the place we want the variable's value to appear. So if we just switch to the design view, we can add it to let's say this group footer. And then we can preview it again to see how it looks. So you can see it continues to add the amounts, but only if the amounts were over 30,000. So here it had calculated $209,246.95, and then it stopped adding the next two records because they didn't break 30,000. Another consideration of displaying variables is defining the scope of the variable. And the scope of the variable just determines how the value of the declared variable is passed from formula to formula within the report. And there are three levels of scope which can be defined for a variable. There's global, which means the value of the variable is available to formulas throughout the entire report. Shared, which means that the value of the variable can be shared with a sub-report as well as all formulas within the main report or local, which means that the variable can only specifically be used by the formula within which it's declared. And the scope of the variable is actually set when you originally declare the variable value by placing the word global, shared, or local, then a space, then the variable declaration of the data type and the variable name as normal. So for example, if we selected this variable formula field we'd created and edit it, we could specify one of those types by simply typing it and then a spacebar in front of the declared data type and the name. Now, if it's omitted, meaning you just don't put one in, which is fairly common, then the default scope for a variable is global. And although the value of global variables can be used by any formula in the report, you must redeclare the variable in any other formula in order to use its value. So for example, let's say that instead of having this running total over here, we would prefer to take the total and put it underneath the total sales column in the group footer 1. We would need a new formula field to do this. So we can choose formula fields and click new and then type in a name for the field. And then just click the Use Editor button. Here we just need to redeclare the name of the variable. However, in this case, the evaluation time is going to be critical. If we simply declared the value of the variable and then inserted it into the group footer 1, it would display 0 because initially, when this would be originally calculated, the value, which is actually determined by looking at values in a group and then adding them, the value originally was 0. Then the value is determined later on by the other function. So it's very important that we know when to reference this particular value. 
and we would want to reference this while printing records. So let's add that in as the evaluation time function, followed by the semicolon. Then, once we've referenced when we want this to occur, we can then make a reference to the value. Check the syntax, and save and close. At this point, we can then put that under the sum of orders in the group footer one. So notice in the preview now, it would just simply show any totals over 30,000. The other field, if deleted, does impact this field, so we wouldn't want to get rid of it. But you could suppress its display once again by right-clicking and going to Format Field. It's worth noting that in order for a variable to work, it has to be placed into a field within the design view of the report, so Crystal can evaluate the calculation and store it for future display. So if you don't need to see the calculation itself in the preview, you can suppress the display of the variable in the design window. You can still see the total someplace else as long as you make a reference to it through another field. Once again, also note this one really needs this while printing records evaluation time function in order to work. If we just simply said currency variable order total, we once again get the zero display. And that's because initially when this would be evaluated during the first pass of the data, it would have a zero value. And once again, you could go back, and if you felt like it, you could also conditionally suppress the display of Robert King and Ann Dodsworth's records so that it looks a little more natural when you're looking at the total sales. Like what you see? Pick up your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free.